Counsel and Assistant to the President for Economic Policy. Gene, it's great to have you with me. And the one thing that people were asking uh, after this speech were, where are the details? So, where are they? Well, first of all, let me make clear that I am the former director of the National Economic Council under President Obama and President Clinton. Now I'm, uh, I've left the White House and I am serving as an advisor to Secretary Clinton. And in terms of the details, uh, we've got a long ways to go. And what she was doing in this speech was putting out the fundamental frame that will define the overall distinction between her and the Republican approach you hear. And it is one where they are talking about whether workers are working hard enough. They're putting out unrealistic growth targets and not even question asking or defining how it will affect the middle class, where she's saying the defining goal and test of everything she does from soup to nuts, from start to finish, is, is it growth that's going to raise middle class incomes and benefit the middle class? And so she's put her test as, we need stronger growth, fair growth, and more long-term growth. And she's putting out very specific policies. Even today, she is suggesting areas she's going to be announcing more details on, like changing our tax code to, in, to incent more profit sharing, so companies are sharing their profits with workers, giving them those incentives of giving them a chance to get higher wages and higher income if things go well. Gene, she's it seems talking like, about reforming Gene, she's putting out gains. over Hold on one yeah. sec. She's putting out overarching themes but not giving the details. So uh, while she wants to attract the progressives, the people that say a Bernie Sanders is getting on board because he will talk about details when it comes to taxes, it seems as if Hillary Clinton will give overarching themes but then no. as we look at that, the details, they're not is, there. Yeah, no, that, that's completely not fair, and because, listen, it is July of 2015, and she is putting, she has already put out some specifics. You're going to see more details and specifics. But this for a lot of people would say be, that she's been running for president since 2008. So let's say, for well, instance, what level the, would the national minimum wage be? Well, you know what, Thomas, um, I'm going to get ahead of the person that I advise. And I don't think it's right to say in July of 2015 that you, it would not be a very smart ca candidate, it would not be a smart campaign if they in July in one speech put out all the details. Of course she's going to put out very detailed speeches on things like higher education, on things like profit sharing, on things like how to reform our tax code to encourage long-term investments. So wait and see. But of course you're not going to put out the details of every Why not? proposal right at the start because you the want to make sure that you, when you do put out those details you have a national discussion on that issue each issue is so important and I think that it's important to put out what your defining frame is so I don't think it's fair Thomas to say that it would be smart to put out every detail now the question is wait and see watch what you see you will see that this is one of the most detailed and substantive and specific campaigns and that she will be putting together very specific proposals and substantive proposals about how we grow the economy, how we make it fairer, how we make sure the investments are long-term and steady and actually rebound to the investments of middle-income families. And Gene, I think then it where is would right you, for her Where would you advise to her to be frame. on the national minimum wage? What would you advise her? Well, I $10 think needs, an hour, 12 15 where would you put her? I think it needs to be higher. I live out in Santa Monica, and I think there's communities where locally we should fight to be at $15 an hour. Mm -hmm. When you do a national minimum income for the whole country, you've got to look at what makes sense. I think it absolutely should be higher. I think she supports that. She's going to fight for that. She's going to support local communities who can take it up as high as $15. But I'm not going to get ahead of her in telling you what her exact proposals are. But I think if you look today, this was important. This is about the defining difference in this election. And I think if a person went out with a lot of specifics, you'd rightly ask, yeah, but what's your overall campaign about? What to what animates you? And I think it's important that she come and have a goal that distinguishes her from those like Jeb Bush who talk about just having a growth measure and not talking about whether what the test is for middle income families. I think it's important for her to say her test is what this does to middle class incomes, to will middle Hillary class securities, Clinton, to Jean, middle class opportunities. Will Hillary Clinton stay cozy with Wall Street or will she go after them? Well, I think you'll see even in this speech, she is going to be tough uh, when it's called for. And I think she is tough in this speech about calling for more individual accountability and saying when, you know, companies, Wall Street companies are uh, uh, doing things that are just absolutely 
uh, illegal, uh, uh, just offensive, that it shouldn't just be the companies that are held accountable, but individuals who are responsible. She talks, she'll talk about doing more on too big to fail, about how companies are too complex to manage. I think you'll see a lot of tough measures on too big to fail on Wall Street, but you're also going to see what the agenda is for how you move investment and finance to what it should be doing, allocating capital to families who want to save for the future, to small businesses with the best ideas, to companies that want to invest in our long term and create jobs here. Too and big to fail, Gene, should Glass-Steagall Glass be restored? Martin O'Malley supports its restoration. Well, I think there's absolutely things that she supports that are about ensuring that companies do not uh, uh, play poker with the taxpayers' money. That's why you have things like the Volcker Rule, and she made very clear she is not going to allow those measures uh, uh, to be repealed or for Wall Street lobbyists to weaken them, and that she's going to come forward with, and she talked about it today in her speech, measures where she's going to ask for tougher enforcement at the individual level, hold people more accountable, do not assume that too big to fail has been mm -hmm. cured or solved. So I think, again, you will hear and see more. What she did today is lay out, I think, a pretty detailed vision piece that goes through her overall frame of why we need stronger, fairer, and longer-term growth. And I think, Thomas, despite what you said, I think it is smart. I've been on a lot of campaigns. The worst thing is when a president just lobs in 15 policies at once and nobody can understand them. How about we've one got policy of, at we've once? We've got a long enough of the 15. campaign. We don't need 15. How about just one policy at once? Well, one policy that she said she's going to talk about later this week is to change our tax code to encourage more profit sharing. That's okay. a very specific proposal. She mentioned very specifically that she's going to give details out on how to reform capital gains taxes so that it encourages long-term investments instead of allowing the most well-off people to pay very low rates for investments that may be just 12 or 13 months. And more importantly, why we want to change our corporate system and our tax code to move away from quarterly capitalism and move more towards long-term investment, an investment that adds value to our economy and to our workers. We will wait to go one policy at a time. Gene Sperling, advisor to Hillary Clinton. Great to see you, Gene. Thanks.